Let's begin, though, with market reaction to CPI. As we said, coming in lighter than expected, Jim. Uh, airfares down eight, uh, used cars down uh, five tenths. Well, there's a lot of oddities. I mean, there's a couple of real wins that people aren't thinking about. Uh, you've got, I mean, well, again, you definitely have the used cars yep. very good, but shelters down a little bit. And what's interesting is what's up. It's almost, I don't want to say it's meaningless, but uh, bakery, bakery products, I mean, you can easily trade down on that, right? Uh, fresh whole chicken. So, I mean, switch over to beef. Eggs down seven. Egg, yep. Yeah, I mean, sugar in sweets. Well, good, we should have less of those anyway. The ones that are up, I am telling you, are going our way too. Because there are things that, frankly, are not, if you really got to go granular in this, pal's winning. Because the things that are up are not nearly as important as the things that are down. We still have to worry about wages. I'm doing a lot of work on wages, and it's not good. IRA, infrastructure, number of plants being built, battery plants, those are not going his way. So we're going to have to, we're going to see a plethora of new jobs created that we're really not ready for. But when it comes to the actual empirical data, I mean, like, other than, than Twinkies, we're in good shape. Yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned wages. Uh, real average hourly earnings, Jim, June to June, now up better than 1%, uh, is going to give some tailwind to the consumer who's going to find that things, I mean, inflation is softer than wages right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's just there's some real wins here. I, look, I mean, and the ones, again, that, that aren't so good, I mean, clocks. I mean, hey. Who needs clocks? What's the point maybe, of maybe a clock? That's, maybe that's part of the issue. Maybe they're just like talking about some antediluvian clock. Um, and then we have, you know, in, in jewelry and watches. And I just think that's Apple Watch. So they're, and I'm, look, I know people are saying, Jim, you're being facetious. No, I'm actually being empirical. The numbers are very good. And uh, right now, if you don't think Pal's winning on the details, I really think you should just get uh, the page after page of what matters. But the big one is used cars. And we saw that coming with Mannheim. And that is right in the sweet spot of America. Yeah, so. uh, and a lot of discussion how it's going to feed through into July's print as well. Yeah. Um, that said, then, why, why are people still talking about next week as a given? Well, I think you have to talk about next week as a given because we are not going to see um, any ability to keep wages down when we have three states, you know, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Louisiana, that are in a, a level of wanting to put up factories that they could distort the whole darn country. Uh, the number of jobs that are open because of IRA, because of chips, is so extraordinary that it's just inflationary in, in, you know, per se. And it's really, I mean, I've been putting together the, the actual numbers of jobs that are required for windmills, um, for for just for pipes from West Virginia, from, for uh, all the different uh, nat natural gas liquids, for LNG. It's insane. So they have to. Some of these projects can't be stopped by the Fed, but the wage inflation is just going to be enormous. So yeah. I don't think it's wrong. I think Jamie Dimon has made some points today when he talks about having to go up. But it all has to do not with what we're seeing in the CPI, but what could be in the pipe for next year, given the fact that there's going to be such wage inflation caused by the federal government.